The key to understanding vectors in any 3D program is understanding triangles and how triangles play into what vectors are in the first place. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a quick examination of triangles. And this is true for every 3D package. Okay. So what I have here is a triangle that I've drawn in, the, in Maya in an orthographic front view. And the bottom side is 4 in length, and that's the x. And, and the y height is 3. Okay, so if you went back to your high school geometry class, you would remember that you seem to remember there is an equation that will help you figure out what the length of this side is. So let's go back to 10th grade and pretend it's written on a piece of paper here as a quiz. And the teacher said, okay, you have a side that's 4 and the side that's 3. How do you find the length of, si of this other side right here? Well, we're going to assume that it's a right angle triangle because we always do that in class and this is how they this little icon right here indicates that it's a right angle triangle so there is an equation to find the right the length of a hypotenuse of a right angle triangle and that is the Pythagorean theorem that says length of C is equal to the square root of the square of A and the square of B the length so if we plug in those values we'll get 3 squared which is 9 plus 4 squared, which is 16, which is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So the length of this side is 5, OK? So now, if we think about this in terms of vectors, what is a vector? A vector is a direction. So it implicitly starts at a point and goes to another point. So we'll say here, if the vector is 4, 3, it implicitly starts at 0, 0 when not given. And the length of this is 5. So if you think of vectors always as hypotenuse values, and the vector point is the coordinate in space that it's going to from an implicit 0, 0 position. Okay. So if we look back at our triangle here in our space, what we get is here are the values that we would say our vector of 4, 3 right here the length of 4, 3, or the magnitude, as it's referred to in vector terms, is 5, because we know that that's the hypotenuse. That's exactly what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and take this to the next level. Here I am in space, and here is the triangle that I just drew. So let's go ahead and advance a few frames here. Now I've added a third dimension. This same triangle, though it looks the same in the, perspect in the front view, now it looks exactly the same, if you look at in the perspective view, it has a new position. It has an x, y, and z value. And the length that we want to find is this length from this red dot right here to this red dot right here. So how do we find that length? Well, it's not any different. All you have to do is add another dimension to your Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals whatever your vector is. Okay. So if we plug in those values real quick, I'm just going to kind of hover over this so it doesn't look too small. Okay, so, but instead of a, b, and c, we're going to do x, y, and z. So if we do x squared plus y squared plus z squared, we'll get that length. And what we get out of those values is 7.071678 and on and on and on. And that's the magnitude or the length of that vector. So if we check that with a distance measuring device in Maya, you can create a little distance measuring tool that puts two locators in space and lets you measure. Sure enough, that is the distance that we have achieved right there, 7.071068. It's rounding up to 78 right here. So, so to reiterate, we're working in triangles here basically, but we just have three-dimensional triangles, not two-dimensional triangles. So every point has three values. Okay, this is great. Now let's talk about what this means in PyMail. So let's go ahead and clear our history here. And let's go ahead and import PyMail.course, PM, as always. And let's talk about vectors. Okay, so if I wanted to create that vector, I would just say vec equals, uh, we'll call this vec1. No, we'll just call it vec. Equals PM, PyMail.dt, which is short for data types. You could type in all data types like this and then do vector like this, right? You could do that. But DT is sort of a convenience they put in there just to make it simple for you. And well, relatively simple. And then for the vector, you can just put in either a, a um, tuple, a tuple, a list. Uh, you can even leave it out. Let me show you here. So three comma four comma five. So that's our vector, right? 
Okay, so let's look at this vector real quick here. It formats it for us and returns back the type vector. And we can always do the C command to see what vec has as its values, or I'm sorry, as its methods. So in here, if you notice, there's a bunch of them. We're going to get to some of these later, but the one we just did is we calculated the length using the Pythagorean theorem, just adding an extra dimension. And guess what? There is actually a method called, you guessed it, length. So where is it? Right here. There it is. So if I just said vec.length, and just hit that value, it would give us back the exact same value that we calculated earlier the full long float value that we needed right here. So that's very useful. Uh, let me show you some of the other cool things we can do with vec. So we'll call this one vec2 is equal to pm.dt.vector. Um, and you can do the same thing with lists. So you can pop in a list, 3, 4, 5. You can do the same value, and it gives you back the same thing. Okay. You can do, um, you don't even have to add the lists or the tuple. You can just say vec3. Let me show you real quick here. Dot dt dot. And you could just do 3, comma 4, comma 5. And as long as you have just three arguments in there, it'll it'll figure it out. It's like, I think I know what this guy is trying to do. So Pymel's kind of making it where you can be a sloppy programmer, which is nice, and that's kind of why I like Python to begin with. Okay. So there are some other cool things you can get with vector, um, some other cool simple setups. So you can say vec0. If you want to generate a quick vector for 0, it's just pm.dt.vector, and then just nothing in the arguments. So if you went and evaluated vec0, it would just return a 0, 0, 0. Sometimes you need that to slap into your matrices, which we're going to maybe do later. There's also some other cool things. And sometimes you have to generate an inferred axis on the x, y, or z. So you can say vec x, oops, we'll do x, it's equal to pm.dt.vector.x axis. Okay, so if you looked at that value, it would just give you back 1, comma 0, comma 0, basically. And you could do the same thing for the uh, z and, or the y and z, which we'll copy. Control V, I'm just going to do the Z axis here just to show you. It's just, you get the picture here. So it would be Z to get the Z axis and Y to get the Y axis. So let's look at vec Z. Yes, so we would get that. And you can even do uh, the negative version of it. So if I wanted to get the negative Z axis, I could say, or negative Y, since we haven't done that yet, vec Y. And I know it's going to be in the negative, the down direction. I could say pm.dt. Dot vector dot y neg axis okay not next neg learn to type and there you see it gives you a negative one so uh, this is a quick formatting so you don't have to have a lot of floating numbers around you don't have to do minus 1.1 whatever you can just insert this in some of your things it's a constant that's built in built into the class for vector. Hey, if you want to know more about the vector class in Pymail, you can go to the Pymail documentation and you can locate it under the data types link right here. So under core modules, you'll see data types. At the top of that page, there's a bunch of mathematical functions that you can use to run your math scripts or anything you're calculating via math. At the bottom of that page, there are some classes. And the ones we're going to concern ourselves with are vector and matrix. Not matrix n and not vector n. Those are oddly sized um, matrices that you can use for other types of math. What, we, what we're concerned with is a 4x4 four four matrix and a three-dimensional vector. Those are the classes that we're going to be working with right now. So let's go ahead and click on vector and see some of the neat stuff on the inside. There's a few examples on how to use it, um, how to add meters or other types of units to your vector, and some other methods that you can use. You'll notice that there's a dot get uh, method for this, but when you're actually trying to get, say, the x, y, or z value, you don't need to append that dot get. You'll see some of the um, uh, x, neg, axis, um, some of the constants that I was talking about. So let's actually go to Maya real quick and explain real quick here. Import PyMail because I had to restart Maya. So if I created this vector and then I said, I just want to get the x value. What's the x value? 
you would think that you would do dot x dot get, but that will give you an error because it's actually a float value that you're trying to run the method get on. So all you have to do is just do this vec dot x, vec dot y, vec dot z. That's all you have to do to get the entire vec or this a single value in the vec, and there always returns back a float. Okay. Some other methods I think are kind of useful here for vectors is the cross product, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. The dot product, which will tell you it, the value of whether they're actually pointing in the same or opposite direction based on a 0 to 1 value. And the um, distance to are, is pretty useful, so you can just say vec a distance to vec b and it'll give you the distance. That's the equivalent of length right here. Or if you don't want to know the length between, if you just know two points in space and you just want to know the distance between them, it'll give you that. It's really cool. And length as we saw earlier.